I, I completely believe in every market cycle in any market, there are good opportunities. Mm -hmm. If I'm right about that, then Lonnie, I would be interested to hear in 2024, where do you think the pockets of opportunity will be? Two things I've been on record and I'll continue to be on record, whether you take one of my classes or you listen to our podcast or you talk to me on the street, real estate by definition is cyclical. Real estate by definition is local and sometimes hyper-local in, in its activity, right? So market participants can make and find deals in any market cycle, any part of the cycle. In this cycle, especially in this cycle, I think in the down cycle, there's actually more of those dislocated type of opportunities where somebody can come in, find opportunities with information that they may have that others don't to make themselves really profitable or set up for profit in the future. So with that in, like I would actually be a little bit contrarian and say a lot of these offices that are located in top five gateway cities, they're probably getting to a point where that that cost basis on entry is low enough that you could operate that asset at 70% occupancy and still produce cash flow. And if you can figure out a way to get it back to 90% occupancy, then you can make a whole lot of cash flow. And then at some point when the market comes back, you're going to be set up for a really nice payday. Now, Again, it doesn't apply broad brush that like all of distressed office is a great buy. But I think, look, if you look at San Francisco, LA, Chicago, I'm not betting against those cities 10 years down the road or 20 years down the road. I think those cities are going to be back to being dynamic. I think people eventually come back to the office. So I would say there's going to be some opportunity in select office um, in select locations. Multifamily is another one where you had a lot of speculative investment towards the end of the cycle where people got a little bit out over their skis, they borrowed too much money, they couldn't actually execute on the value add plan that they thought they could. And so there's going to be an opportunity to come in, at, you know, in a fairly sizable number of those deals and potentially buy the asset, you know, for the debt or maybe less than the debt and really generate some upside if you can actually execute on a value add plan. And so, um, you know, I think those are two kind of traditional. I think if you look outside of that, um, there's going to be some opportunity in some of these other asset classes just based on market disruption. So we talked a little bit earlier about retail, you know, having a renaissance. There are still a lot of mom and pop operated strip centers and neighborhood centers that probably have leases that are below market, especially given the run up in, in rental rates. And sourcing those deals, finding those non-institutionally owned assets in good locations are going to provide some real upside for people that can execute. Mm, which you're really good at, Bo. Or that's your experience is, or would be that right there. Well, we've done two, two group investment deals over the last couple of years that were buying mom and pop owned strip centers with below market leases and, and, and doing exactly what he just said. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's worked really well. 